Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. We are here to talk about a health issue that affects millions of people around the world, repetitive strain injuries, or otherwise known as RSIs. My name is Sue Burnett and I am a Canadian certified professional ergonomist. I have 30 years of experience in the ergonomics field. I am a proud business owner of Ergo Now, where we provide ergonomic consulting services as well as office products. We take pride in not only being able to recommend solutions, but also supply the products. It is a valuable service where we can match the product to the client and educate them on the proper use. Tomorrow is Repetitive Strain Injury Day, a day dedicated to raising awareness about this condition and promoting ways to prevent and treat it. At Ergo Now, we believe that everyone has the right to a healthy and pain-free work environment, and that starts with understanding the risks. Over the past two years, we have performed hundreds of office ergonomic assessments. During this presentation, our team will focus on the most common issues that are leading to the RSIs. The purpose is to create awareness and educate you to take proactive steps to prevent them in the future. We hope this presentation will be both informative and valuable to you. I have Angela Kakaninden, junior ergonomist, and Nick Chambry, he's a University of Windsor student intern, assisting with this presentation. So let's get started. As you may already know, RSI is a condition that can cause pain, discomfort, and sometimes it can be a disability in the affected area. It is often caused by overuse of the soft tissues of the body. This includes muscles, tendons, and blood vessels, which can also impact the nerves. We think that these injuries are more susceptible to those who have physically demanding jobs. However, they can affect jobs that are deemed more sedentary, like office workers. These injuries will have varied discomforts at the start, including general achiness, muscle stiffness, and tightness. Uh, as it intensifies, it can also create the burning like sensations, maybe shooting pain, numbness, and weakness. If left untreated, it can lead to a more serious disabling condition. Even with initial treatments, symptoms may gradually limit or restrict your ability to perform your usual activities. What is the cause of RSIs? These type of injuries usually creep in slowly over time. Symptoms begin gradually and then they become constant and more intense. Rarely is it a result of a one-time incident. It usually is a combination of things that will result in the discomforts. And these can be any of the following. So awkward body postures or motions. When working in non-neutral postures, usually certain muscle groups are exerting more of the demands, so they are working much too hard. Some muscles are constantly contracting and some muscles are being stretched too far. Our bodies are meant to tolerate a great deal. However, they all have their limits. In this first picture, for example, as we adopt these postures over time. Some muscles will continue to stay tight, some muscles will actually be lengthened, and that will actually affect how we hold ourselves up over time. And then in the other picture here, we have the forearm. So if you're working on a keyboard and your wrists are raised in that extension position, those top muscles of your forearm, called your extensors, will contract on a consistent regular basis. And over time, those muscles are gonna fatigue and that's where you might feel that soreness, stiffness, tightness in those forearm muscles. So number two, repetitive motions. So in addition to the awkward postures, we're now performing these same motions over and over again throughout the day. Well, this will place the extra demands on those particular muscles and soft tissues. Um, lack of recovery. We're not getting enough rest for those particular muscle groups. So that will have an impact over the course of time. Um, number three, static positions. Again, holding 
those postures in the same position for long durations will cause increased demands on those muscle groups. Over time, your muscles and the tendons and the ligaments aren't going to be able to tolerate those stresses any longer. Coming out of COVID, a good number of people continue to work from home or have the flexibility of a hybrid schedule. The one consistent thing is how much we spend on our digital devices. Our virtual meetings, our virtual appointments, we're working from home, have less paperwork handling. We're moving a lot less these days. So even at home from a personal standpoint, we're using our computers even for that side of things. We're using it for shopping, recipes, arranging our daily schedules. We spend a lot of time in static positions. So this is where awareness and getting some movement in our day is so important. Injuries most noted from our assessments here at ErgoNow include low back injuries, such as muscle strains, herniated discs, and degenerative disc disease. Shoulder injuries, such as rotator cuff tears, tendonitis, and bursitis. Hand and wrist injuries, such as tendonitis and muscle fatigue and weakness. Neck injuries, such as muscle strains, muscle spasms, and head injuries such as eye strains and headaches. The most common factors that we have noticed to be the biggest contributors are being highlighted today as our red flags. We want to highlight these red flags to you as these are the culprits that are leading to the reported discomforts and injuries in the office environments. These include working heights, how you set yourself up in your workstation, equipment used, stack positioning for long durations, placement of the equipment, placement or location of your equipment, and equipment size. The first red flag we are starting with today is posture, but specifically wrist posture. Wrist extension is a common posture we see people perform while at their workstation. Wrist extension is commonly seen when mousing or keyboarding. Taking on this posture is causing muscle overuse. The muscles in the forearms are contracting to hold this posture, and over time your muscles become tired. The cause of wrist extension is being positioned too low and or the keyboard and mouse are being positioned too high. On the other hand, there is wrist deviation. Wrist deviation is another common posture we see. Wrist deviation is when your hand is turned inward or outward. The common cause of this posturing is how people mouse, um, having too small of a keyboard or laptop for your shoulder width, or the functions of the keys that you use. Another postural red flag we see is incorrect seated heights. When you are not seated at proper working heights, it affects the hip angles and places unnecessary forces on the lower back. The further an individual deviates from a neutral posture, the more likely they are to experience discomforts. Here is an example of a poor seated posture. This person is seated flex forward and not receiving any support from the backrest. Sitting in this position places an increased demands on the low back muscles and on the disc between the vertebrae. They are also seated too high and tucking their feet under the chair. This creates improper hip angles and increases the demands on the muscles in the legs and knees. This is the ideal seated posture. However, when we sit with our hips forward, our pelvis rotates posteriorly and our lumbar spine flexes. Now we are moving on to working heights and how it affects our shoulder posturing. This girl is not seated at proper height. Currently, she is seated too low, affecting her shoulder posturing, and she has demonstrated elevated shoulders. Elevated shoulders is a common posture that we see in the workplace when on assessments. This posture is something our body can tolerate, but eventually over time, those muscles are going to fatigue. We always like to recommend doing a shoulder check. Elevate your shoulders and raising them to your ears and then dropping them down and that is your relaxed shoulder position. 
Moving on to the second red flag is the equipment being used. We are going to start off with addressing the chair. One of the biggest contributing factors to reported discomforts is the fit of your chair. A common error that we see during our ergonomic assessments is the seat pan depth does not properly suit the client. Sometimes the seat pan depth is too short and sometimes it is too long. The hip to knee ratio is important because it can promote altered postures. Another contributing factor to reported discomforts is the seat pan cushioning of the chair. How worn out is your seat pan cushioning? When at an office chair, you need to make sure you have good cushioning support. Believe it or not, some people are not aware of how worn out the cushioning is in their seat pan. If you're experiencing low back, tailbone, or hip discomforts, consider the negative effects this may place onto your lower extremities. For example, minimal seat pan cushioning could create contact stress, pressure, and or your weight may be distributed unevenly on one side or the other. Does the chair have good lumbar support or is it flat? Does the chair take on a concave shape? This promotes slouching. Is the backrest tall enough for your needs or is it too short not to give you any support? Consider the shape of your backrest. Does it place you in good postures or is it contributing to round postures? If you cannot find a chair with the adjustability, then be sure to find one that fits your shape as best as possible. Remember, you want to allow your muscles to relax while seated and working. Let your muscles rest. These are some of the features that can help improve your positioning. They include seat height, back height, seat pan tilt, backrest angle, and armrest height. Moving on to our third red flag, static postures for long durations. Movement is key. Changing things up throughout the day has to be the best health benefit. For example, increase blood flow and increase circulation. One feature that we like to see in chairs is the tilt mechanism. When you're seated for a majority of your workday, being able to change your seated postures is encouraged. It is important to take the time to adjust the backrest and the seat pan angles and to take breaks from sitting and or standing. Um, so you should always walk around. For those who have um, a sit-stand unit, standing for long periods of time is not always recommended. We do not expect you to stand for four hours of your day, but even when standing, we recommend that you alternate your postures. For example, shift your weight from side to side, elevate a foot onto a footrest, and these are just some examples to increase movement throughout your day. Red flag number four, and that is going to be placement of equipment. Neutral posture for the shoulders is keeping your arms at your side. This is when your muscles are most relaxed. Items that are placed further away increase the demands of the muscles of your upper extremities. The longer the muscles have to work in these postures, the increased likelihood of injury. For example, frequently used um, items in the office um, is the keyboard. In the first photo, they are reaching for the keyboard and increasing the demands on the muscles of your shoulders and your upper back. So placing your keyboard close to the edge of the desk is going to keep your shoulders nice and relaxed. Where is your mouse located? Ideally, you want to work with your mouse in line with to your shoulders. Here are a couple of postures we suggest you avoid. The first is elevated shoulders. This person has their mouse on a higher platform than their keyboard. And the second is this posture over here. This person has an extended elbow and abducted shoulders. Ideally, what you want is your mouse as close to your keyboard as possible. Your goal is to keep your elbows in line with your shoulders as much as possible and not deviating away. For those individuals who experience neck pain, the first thing we like to review is placement of the monitors. Monitor placement is very dependent on the individual themselves. Some of us have 20-20 vision and some of us wear prescription glasses. If you do wear glasses, we during assessments, we like to ask if the prescription is for single vision or if they're bifocal or progressive glasses. The location of the monitor should be set for your individual needs. Forward head positioning is also a contributor to neck discomforts. Holding your head forward, it places stress on the muscles of your neck. To figure out if your head positioning is correct, I tell people to check to see if their ears are in line with their shoulders. 
Red flag number five, equipment size. It is important to go get equipment that fits and feels comfortable to your body. People are becoming more and more sensitive in their hands and fingers. This is due to the frequency of which we are mousing and clicking. Also, the size and shape of their equipment can play a factor into your discomforts and recovery. It is important to know how to manipulate your mouse. There are many types of different mouses out there. Therefore, the type of mouse you use should be based on your individual comfortability and also sensitivities. If the keyboard is equal or bigger than your shoulder width, this will create shoulder abduction. Muscle abduction is the motion of the limb being away from the center of your body. Equipment size plays a big role into how you work, so knowing your anthropometrics and what keys and functions you use is important. Seat pan size can also play a factor into shoulder posturing. Like Goldilocks, it is important to find your perfect fit. A chair that is too wide can affect your upper extremities. So we have noticed that some people have a love-hate relationship with armrest. When used properly, they provide support for your arms and your shoulders, but depending on the adjustability and the configuration of your workstation, they be can become an interference. Now, let's talk about solutions. Pay attention to your discomforts. Listen to your body. Do not ignore what it is trying to tell you. Do not ignore those red flags. So the first thing you want to do is know your working heights. Take everything we just told you and apply it to your current workstation. Know how to adjust your equipment to make it right. The next thing is be aware of your posturing. How are you working? How are you holding yourself? This will play a big role into how, um, how you work. Um, it is always good to get good and well-fitting equipment, whether that be your chair, your keyboard, your mouse. You want to make sure that your workstation fits your individual needs. It is also always important to incorporate movement throughout your day, um, whether that means taking more breaks, stepping away from your workstation, or even just taking your breaks in general, because some people um, do not do that. So if you do have the ability to take breaks, take full advantage of that. What you also want to do is you want to stretch. Stretching is always important. Um, and last but not least, if all else fails, is get an ergonomic assessment done. We are here for you. Thank you, Angela. Thank you, Nick. That wraps up our webinar for today. We firmly believe that knowledge is power and we want to enable you to take control of your health. If you are having discomforts, listen to your body and do not ignore it. It is best to give your body the attention right away rather than letting the discomfort settle in. The healing or recovery time is usually much quicker when action is taken sooner. Please reach out to us if you have any specific needs or simply looking for further direction. And as a special thank you for attending the webinar today, we are offering one of you the chance to win a free office assessment. So we will draw this prize immediately following the webinar and we'll contact the winner to notify them. We are also offering a 10% discount to all of you in attendance today on our office chairs. So please contact us either by phone or by email, which is info at ergonow.com, and we will get that arranged with you directly. So to learn more about our upcoming training sessions, various ergonomic tips, or product sales, please sign up for our newsletter. And thank you for attending, and have a great rest of your day.